Hi guys, I hope that you're all doing really well. So today I have a little bit of a different video for you. I don't think I've ever filmed this on my channel before. We're going to be talking about the most underrated fragrances from some of my favorite brands. So if you guys like this video, if you like the concept, um, let me know what other brands you want me to do it for and I can definitely do that as well But yeah, I kind of just felt like today. It was like really a random thing that came to mind I was like I want to talk about underrated fragrances from some of my favorite brands. So I don't know. Let's give it a go starting out with Penhaligons now I recently got this fragrance and I have fallen deeply in love with it. This is Constantinople from Penhaligons now, I haven't really heard anybody talk about the scent, and to be honest, I'm not really surprised because Constantinople is quite an acquired scent. Like, I really don't think that this fragrance will be for everyone. I would not recommend anyone to blind buy this fragrance because it's very particular. Now, I remember the first time that I smelled it, I actually thought it was a rose oud because that's kind of what it reminded me of. It had this like kind of something floral like rose but then it had this really deep kind of woodiness to it so i was thinking that's my dog by the way he's behind me i didn't fall first time that i smelled this fragrance i did actually think it was a rose root but it's not actually in fact this fragrance is a kind of spicy aromatic green woody scent but overall i would say you get something very very woody and quite green in a way but it is just beautiful, you guys. Like, I really cannot explain how much I love this fragrance. And I think what I love about it the most is how it makes me feel. This makes me feel so expensive, so luxurious, so classy, so boss woman that I'm just in love with the way that it smells. It really does have this very luxury, chic quality about it. And I think that it's very underrated. If you're somebody who likes a little more of like a complex niche fragrance, I would 100% recommend that you check out Constantinople. And if you are a fan, I'm going to use the reference of Rose Oud's, try Constantinople. I'm not saying it is a Rose Oud because it's absolutely not, but it does have something that reminds you of a Rose Oud fragrance. So I would definitely recommend checking it out. It is absolutely stunning. It's very woody, kind of spicy in a way. A little bit green it's just very opulent very rich very classy very luxurious and I am in love with it not to mention that it has fantastic longevity and projection and yeah I just think it's an underrated fragrance that you should try like it's a very it's a very beautiful scent that I feel like more people should know about this one guys is gonna shock you Cassili from Parfum de Mali I definitely think that Cassili is one of the most underrated fragrances from Parfum de Mali. I was looking at my Mali fragrances from men and women and I was like, which one do I think are the most underrated? I would also say something like Habdan is really underrated, Acaster as well, super underrated. But the one that I think is underrated and more people should give a try is Cassili. Now, I'm going to tell you guys something right now. It's a little bit funny but when the first time that I tried this fragrance I believe it was released maybe about four years ago around that time the first time that I tried it I didn't really love it I liked the scent I thought it was quite a nice fragrance but it didn't feel like me at that time in my life I wanted to wear Delina Atomic Rose from Inicio. I was wearing, I don't know, a lot of other fragrances. And for some reason, Cassili just didn't do it for me at the time when this fragrance launched. But now, I don't know what happened, you guys. I don't know what happened. But I think my taste is evolving. And obviously, as you get older, you start to appreciate different sort of scents. And a few weeks ago, I just had this random craving to wear Cassili. I was like, I have to wear Cassili. Like, it was like an urgency. Like, I was like... I need to wear it right now and I sprayed it on and I just fell in love with the scent and I'm so happy because I really think that it is a beautiful fragrance do I think it's better than Delina no probably not but at this point in my life I would much rather smell like Cassili than I would want to smell like Delina now what you have with Cassili is a very interesting peachy powdery floral scent 
it has something kind of fruity, musky, powdery, and very floral about it. What you have in Casilli is some plum, you have a bit of mimosa, frangipani, I think there's some vanilla and tonka and sandalwood in the base, but overall what I get is a very peachy floral fragrance. Like it's peachy, it's creamy, it's smooth, it's a little bit powdery. Some people refer to this fragrance as like a bit of a shampoo smell, which I can see that sort of like comparison, like I do see it but not too much. I have a lot of fragrances that smell like shampoo and I wouldn't necessarily say that Cassili is like a shampoo scent, but it does smell really beautiful and very elegant, very feminine, very delicate. And I just love it. Like I cannot tell you guys why, but I just fell in love with Cassili recently after owning the bottle for so many years. I am so happy because sometimes that happens to me with my collection. As you guys know, I have a lot of fragrances, so sometimes I will fall in love with a scent that I've had for years, but like in 2023. And I love that. I love that for me. Casilli, beautiful fragrance, definitely slept on from the brand. Another one that I think is slept on is Athalia, but I really wanted to highlight Casilli because personally, I have fallen in love with it just recently, and I definitely think it's more underrated. I also think that my taste is evolving. Like, I feel like since I'm getting older, well, I'm 25, but I do think since I'm coming into my mid-20s, I'm starting to want to wear different type of scents and be represented in a different way. Next up, we have Grand Soir from Maison Francis Kirchjean. Now, hold up all of your comments that are going to say Grand Soir is not underrated, everybody loves it, everybody talks about it. Okay, that may be true to some extent, but if you compare Grand Soir to the online fame of Baccarat Rouge, of Gentle Fluidity Gold, of Oud Satin Mood even. Grand Soir doesn't even compare to the success of those fragrances online. Online. But, in my opinion, Grand Soir is the best fragrance from MFK. I said it and I really, I really, really mean that. Grand Soir to me is a masterpiece. It's a I don't have many fragrances in my collection that I would consider a masterpiece, but Grand Soir is definitely one of them. For me, it is the best amber fragrance in the world, for me in my opinion. It's just so incredible. It's warm, it's sweet, it's very balsamic and smooth and a little bit spicy. Oh wow. I feel like amber, it can go in so many different directions. It can be super spicy, it can be very dry, it can be almost animalic in a way, it can be really woody. Grand Soir, the way that the amber is in here is a very smooth and sweet and balsamic amber fragrance and it's just spectacular. And yes, it definitely is on the more underrated side from the brand, so I feel like more people need to try it. And also if you're a woman watching this video, Grand Soir is 100% unisex. Like, don't let maybe the colour of the juice scare you or the name, I don't know. It's 100% unisex. Men and women can wear it. It's a very sweet, warm amber fragrance that is very comforting, yet very chic. Like, very, very, very chic. I said it in a TikTok video, but I imagine, and I don't want this to put people off, I imagine to smell this on like an older person in like a beautiful, like vintage designer outfit walking around Saint Germain in Paris. That's what I imagine the person that's wearing Grand Soir to look like. Incredible, incredible, incredible fragrance. Zerzhov. Now, Zerzhov was a difficult brand because you guys know I have a lot from Zerzhov. And there is a lot that I would consider to be more on the underrated side. But if there is one that I really want to bring some light to, and I have in the past, I've spoken about this fragrance a lot on my channel, it is Overture. Now, I was also considering putting Torino 22, but if I can speak about a fragrance that I really think is very, very special, like very special, unique, just incredible, more people need to try it, it is Overture. Overture is such a unique fragrance. Guys, I cannot even explain it. It's the sort of scent that is very aloof. Like, it doesn't smell like a fall winter scent, but it also doesn't smell like a spring summer scent. It's very transformative. Let me go ahead and spray it so I can give you guys 
a better description. Yeah, I don't know, guys. This one is so unique. So what you have in Overture is cinnamon, you have sandalwood, you have a fig leaf note in here, which you do feel a little bit. It's sweet and creamy and tropical and a little bit spicy, but I don't know. It smells somewhat tropical in a way, and I don't know if any of you guys have smelled it and if you agree, but for me, it has something that almost smells tropical. And for me personally, I always bring Overture on vacation with me. If I am going somewhere that has beautiful beaches and the water, and I want that kind of tropical island smell, I'm taking Overture with me. Like every single time. I took this with me to the Maldives twice. Not even once, I brought it with me twice because in the heat, you would think that a cinnamon sandalwood fig leaf fragrance would not smell good in the heat. This one, it radiates off of your skin in such an incredible way in the hot weather, especially in like a tropical climate. <gasps> My God, you guys, it's incredible. But what is so interesting is that it works just as well in the fall and winter. Again, because of that cinnamon and sandalwood and fig, it just, it just works. It is so spectacular, you guys, this fragrance. And like I said, more people need to try it. It's the sort of fragrance that is going to grab people's attention because of how unique the scent is. I remember I went out with somebody from the perfume industry and I was wearing Overture and he was like, come back here. Like he gave me a hug and he was like, whoa, like what are you wearing? That smells really, really good. And it was Overture, of course. I love the scent, amazing longevity, amazing projection. More people need to try this one, especially in the heat. So next up we have Inicio Bless Baraka. Another brand that I wasn't sure exactly which fragrance to include in this topic of video because I feel like there's about one or two Inicios that are pretty underrated, but I would say it has to be Bless Baraka. Yeah, everybody loves Oud for Greatness, Side Effect, Atomic Rose, what else do they love? Absolute Aphrodisiac, but not many people speak about Bless Baraka, and I would say it's absolutely one of the best from Inicio. This is a very dry, spicy amber fragrance with a bit of sweetness, something musky and woody in the base. And it's just so addictive, you guys. On the skin, this one is incredible. Like on the skin, this fragrance is magnetic. It is truly incredible. And I don't even know why I don't wear this fragrance more. I would assume it's because of the heat. As you guys know, I live in Dubai, so it's really hot most of the year. And sometimes I have noticed, I have noticed, and I'm so sad, spicy fragrances in the Dubai heat, once you're a little bit sweaty and stuff, sometimes it's not a good situation. Like it's a bit of a swamp armpit situation. So that's the only reason that I don't wear spicy fragrances that much here in Dubai, but Bless Baraka is spectacular. Dry, woody, spicy, sweet amber fragrance with a muskiness, something very like, like carnal about it. It's just incredible. More people need to try this one. If you like a spicy amber scent, you need to try it. And that's what I love about the note of amber. I love how I'm going on so many tangents right now. ADHD. That's what I love about amber is that you can have ambers like this that are very warm and cocooning and balsamic and, and sweet and cozy and more a bit more like gourmand. But then you have ambers like this that are spicy, intense, fierce, like dry. Yeah, I love perfumery. The next fragrance that we have here is Onabati from Diptyque. Now, although this fragrance is a new release, like it just came out in 2023, I feel like not many people have talked about this scent yet and it's so special you guys like so special i bought this with my own money it was not sent to me i bought it at nice airport the other night because i just got back from a trip and when i smelled it i was i was blown away like absolutely blown away by this fragrance you guys like wow it is not what i expected from diptyque i feel like diptyque are often launching fragrances that smell quite transparent and airy, a little bit more classic. I don't know, like I, I like the vibe of Diptyque. I've always liked the brand, but I was really impressed with this launch on Nabati. I feel like it really has something special and unique about it. Now, what you're gonna get is a green, 
woody, spicy, ambery scent with a little bit of like a sweetness, like a honeyed sweetness going on. But it's mostly this very complex green woody amber fragrance with a sweetness and it's just it's so interesting like so 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 interesting this is another fragrance that i spoke about recently on my tiktok and i said that this is the sort of fragrance that i would imagine on like a parisian girl and she's never going to tell you what is her scent like she's never going to let out that she is wearing onabati and she only has one fragrance that she wears and it's this that is the sort of person that i see wearing this scent I don't think that it's going to be for everyone like i really don't think it's going to be for everyone because it has something very very niche very complex about it that i just don't think would appeal to so many people it's also the sort of scent that i would say maybe leans a little more masculine rather than feminine but it doesn't stop me from wearing i wear all fragrances so i don't care but if you're a woman watching and you're thinking that you might like this it definitely does lean maybe slightly more masculine but i love it it's like it is so unique it's peculiar it's the sort of scent that you're kind of like you're, you're intrigued by what it smells like so you want to keep going back and smelling it again it's gorgeous you guys like absolutely gorgeous really great projection and longevity as well unlike some other diptyque fragrances it does last it lasted on my skin around seven hours i would say with a pretty nice projection like a within your arms length so definitely underrated i hope more people get on this one not gonna be for everyone not at all but i love this next up we have bdk and the fragrance that i think is the most underrated from the brand and to be honest, I have never even spoke about it. I think I spoke about this fragrance once. It is Tabajos from BDK. This fragrance is stunning, you guys. Absolutely stunning. And I, I, every time that I smell it on the Tessa strip, I tell myself it's amazing, like I need to wear it more. And then I just never end up wearing it. And I'm not really sure why. But every time I smell it, Oh my gosh, I fall in love with the scent all over again. Tabajos is this beautiful, like kind of sweet, jammy rose scent with a bit of patchouli, some cacao, like a fruitiness. There is something, not like lychee, but there is like a sticky fruitiness in there. A little dusting of cacao, just a little bit, but it's this very like kind of tart, sweet rose fragrance with something a little bit powdery. It's just gorgeous, you guys, like absolutely gorgeous. And more people need to try this one. The tobacco note is not really prominent in here. It doesn't smell like smoky, like too much. It's a very, it's a jammy rose fragrance. Like that's what it smells like to me. And it's incredible. Like I really, really am going to start wearing this one because I absolutely love it. It's yeah, it's jammy, maybe a touch spicy, it's sweet, a little bit of cacao, some patchouli. It's absolutely gorgeous, guys, like absolutely gorgeous. Longevity projection as well is fantastic on the scent. I personally, when I have tested it, have gotten around seven to eight hours of really good wear with a pretty good projection. So Tabajos from BDK, definitely underrated. Yeah. I need to wear this one myself and talk about it more because it's absolutely beautiful. This next fragrance has to be one of the most underrated in this list. And if you guys like the same fragrance as me, you have to go out and try this one because it is so good. This is Ret Bar from Memo Paris. Now, I have to be honest, the person in my household that wears this fragrance more is actually Pierre. But for me, it's a 100% unisex fragrance. It is not feminine, nor is it masculine. But my gosh, is it incredible. What you have with Ret Bar is this stunning kind of spicy vanilla fragrance with an amberiness, a little bit of a fruitiness from some raspberry. There is some spices like cardamom inside. And also you have a touch, just a touch of oud in the base. Just a little hint of oud to bring something a little more deep, woody, not animalic. I don't want to scare you guys from trying it, but just like a little, a little drop of oud. And it is so, 
so good you guys you also have some saffron in here which i do feel you have vanilla you have the saffron you have this amberiness a little bit of a raspberry kick so a bit of a red fruitiness definitely a little bit of oud in the base guys so many of you are going to love this one if you try it if you like a little more of like a complex ambery vanilla scent you're going to love Red Bar. Some people compare this fragrance to The Moon from Frederick Mal. I own The Moon, like I have a bottle of it down there. And The Moon is much more like intense, like much more difficult to understand and to wear. Red Bar is much more smooth, much more easy. It's so gorgeous, you guys. You really need to try this one. And it has fantastic longevity and projection around the eight hour mark with a minimal projection. It is gorgeous, like absolutely gorgeous. I I really recommend this one literally nobody talks about this fragrance from memo memo to be fair they have a lot of releases every year so it's kind of hard to keep up but rep bar is one that is slept on so hard and you guys need to go out and try if you like the sound of it it is so beautiful so beautiful i feel like me re-smelling all of these scents is making me like fall in love all over again next up we have matière première and the fragrance that i think is the most slept on from the brand is bois de ben this fragrance guys more people need to try this one men and women both everyone everyone in the world needs to try this one it is so slept on and i have to be honest with you guys like even me i don't find myself pulling for this fragrance often but i have a reason for that and it's because this fragrance is super intense like a lot of the mattia premier fragrances they are very strong and sometimes, like I said, with the Dubai heat, I just don't want to wear something too strong. But Bois de Ben is amazing. What you're gonna get with this fragrance is a very sweet, very intense woody scent. That is what you're gonna get, a sweet woody fragrance, almost with a hint of like iris. Like I am sure it's not listed in the notes, but you get like this smooth, like slightly powdery iris note in there as well it's smooth it's sweet and it's extremely woody and intoxicating like intoxicating you guys i am planning to do a video on if you like gris chanel you like these fragrances and i'm gonna include bois de ben because if you like gris chanel i feel like you should check out bois de ben they're not the same they're not even in the same I don't know, you couldn't even say that they're the same fragrance at all. I am sure if you like Gris Chanel, you will love Bois de Ben because it's smooth, it's very woody, it gets creamier and creamier the more that it's on your skin, and it's very sweet as well. I personally pick up quite a lot of sweetness, and I also get that beautiful kind of iris powdery creaminess as well. Gorgeous fragrance from Mattia Premier that is super underrated, and I hope more people check it out. It's a stunning creation from Aurelien Guichard, and I, I love it. And as usual, I don't even need to mention it, Mattia Premier, they are known now for creating beast mode scents. They create the most beast mode fragrances, you guys. Next up, we have a Nishane fragrance. By far the most underrated Nishane. I love this scent, and I don't even think, you guys, like it's stressing me out. I don't even think that I've spoken about it. This is Temp Fluo. You can see from my bottle that I have definitely worn the fragrance at some point this year, like maybe about three months ago before I left for summer. I was obsessed with Temp Fluo, like obsessed. And I don't even know. Yeah, I don't know if I spoke about it on my channel, which really worries me because I love this fragrance and it is so underrated from Nishane. You guys know the popular ones, 100 Silent Ways, which is great, but a little boring. Hachivats, you have Annie, you have Nefs, which I love. The most underrated by far is Temp Fluo. Now, yeah, what you have here is this gorgeous, fresh, floral, gourmand, woody scent. It's absolutely perfect you have orange blossom and jasmine you have some mandarin vanilla praline some woods in the base it is incredible i would say what you get is this very um fresh floral with that orange blossom and jasmine you really feel especially the orange blossom in the scent mixed with some sweetness not too much but there is definitely a sweetness there and some dry woods in the base it is so good you guys like absolutely incredible now i do have to say something i feel like this scent it doesn't like 
in a not in a negative way but it does remind me like of a designer fragrance but done in a niche way if that makes any sense at all so i feel like this fragrance will appeal to a lot of you women that are watching because it's so beautifully done and it is so strong like this one is going to leave a huge trail behind you huge trail behind you it's going to last on your skin for hours and hours so i love it it's i just I just remember because I didn't wear this one for a while. You have that freshness and that crispness from the orange blossom, but it's sweet and it's woody. It's just incredible, you guys. So Temp Fluo from Nishane, the most underrated, like by far, and it is amazing, like absolutely amazing. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know what brands do you want to see me talk about next. I can do Killian, Amouage, Montal, Mancera. The list goes on. I can do whatever. So let me know if you enjoyed it. It was a very fun video to film. And yeah, thank you guys so much. And I will see you very soon. Bye-bye.